Hello everybody, and this is going to be your video on the blood supply and blood vessels and arteries going in and out of the kidney. Um, it's pretty straightforward and simple. We're going to be hopping between this overall view and this model for this one. Just back and forth. Um, but there are some caveats that I would like after I have told you all of this, there are some caveats that I would like to point out in case you are one of my book readers that are reading your lab manual. Right? So bear with me here through this. Hopefully this won't be as bad as the nephron and you guys will understand your blood flow through the kidneys. Right? We're going to start where it all begins. You have renal arteries that go to each kidney. Those are the big arteries going to each kidney. Once they get into the kidney, they break apart and they start forking in the middle of the roads, right? Those are called segmental arteries. And the segmental arteries are going to go to each of these medulla. And you're going to end up with an artery going up the side of each medulla. These arteries here are called your interlobar arteries because they are between the lobes, right? So you can see a lobe of medulla here and a lobe of medulla here, and you're going to have an interlobar artery between each one. Inter means between, lobe, lobar. So interlobar artery, interlobar artery. And then running along the top of the medullas, you have something called an arcuate artery. So that is the arcuate artery along the top of the medulla. And then from there, you have these little bitty arteries that start reaching out like little sun rays when you're drawing a sun with a circle, right? And they radiate like little sun rays out of these arcuate arteries, and they are called cortical radiate arteries. So they're radiating out through the cortex. So they are called cortical radiate arteries. And each of these arteries, they're either going to feed your kidney tissue or the blood, most of the blood, is being sent right here to those renal corpuscles that we talked about in your last video. And it's going to go through afferent arterioles and then exit through efferent arterioles, and there you go. Right? From there, and after feeding kidney tissue, because some of that blood does feed the kidney tissue, your kidneys need food too. We're just going to run the same names in reverse. The blood's going to flow back down through cortical radiate veins to reach an arcuate vein that's running along the top of the medulla to then go down an, inter, uh, an interlobar vein. So interlobar vein all, like along the side of the medulla. And then from there, these veins these interlobar veins are going to connect to renal veins. And there you go. Dr. Stokes's lecture class is adamant, or at least was a few semesters ago, that there were no segmental veins. So we are going to go with that in our lab. You will not see segmental veins anywhere because on our campus those don't exist. So you can cross out the word vein next to segmental. right? So if we're going to trace this blood flow once again, we go arteries first. So renal arteries, segmental arteries, interlobar arteries, arcuate arteries, cortical radiate arteries, cortical radiate veins, arcuate veins, interlobar veins, renal vein. And there you go for blood flow. The caveat I have for this is see these lovely cortical radiate arteries and veins up here your lab manual acknowledges and refers to them more by their second name their secondary name is interlobular veins if that kind of made your brain stall out a little bit you're not alone Right? Because when you're trying to memorize this stuff, it may get confusing to remember these as interlobular arteries and veins and these as interlobar arteries and veins. They are literally two letters off from one another 
and one of them has an extra syllable because of those two letters. So interlobar, interlobular, right? Literally, this one has a UL attached to it. So your cortical radiate arteries and veins have two different potential names. And if you are one of my students that reads the lab manual, you know that these ones are also called interlobular. Whichever one you choose to write on midterms and quizzes and that kind of thing, I will accept. This artery here is either a cortical radiate artery or an interlobular artery. Whichever one you wanted to memorize, my lovely students, whichever one you wanted to memorize. That being said, personally, I find it easier to remember these ones are cortical radiate and these ones are, are interlobar because if you try to just remember interlobar and interlobular, if you misspell something on a quiz or the mid or the final, if you forget that, or if you panic mid final exam and switch your two answers, as your teacher, I have to count it wrong because these ones are interlobular arteries and veins, not interlobar. And these are interlobar, not interlobular. So if you get it right, like if you are correct, you get the points. Don't get me wrong. Like your, your stuff is gonna be graded accurately and I don't care if you guys use the secondary term that's easier to remember or the one your lab manual focuses on um, because one's used more in your lecture textbook and the others just in your lab manual. You're fine either way. You're gonna get your points as long as you are correct, but you have to be correct. And my warning is it is super easy to confuse or typo or accidentally type wrong interlobular versus interlobar. Like, honestly, I wrote this on the board for my in-person class. This is my lovely handwriting and that's the difference between the spellings of the two words. As you can tell, it's only that UL syllable right there. Uh, Remember what you remember, do what is best for you. You're gonna be graded accurately and fairly regardless. And I will take either of the two answers for the correct answers between cortical radiate or interlobular. So you don't have to worry about that. I am not that mean or picky of a teacher. But I will tell you, if you misspell something, I have to count it wrong because they are two different sets of arteries and veins. So that is my only warning to you guys about memorizing these right? Memorize what works best for you, but you have to be right. And with that, I will leave you and you guys will have a bladder video next and then your urinary system will be done. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.